The, you know, the whole environmental movement is really about really assigning the real costs of a product to the, the generation of the product. Uh, a lot of things that create toxic um, uh, problems, uh, nobody was paying for it. And so the idea that we can internalize those costs uh, so that the real cost of a product is included in the, the handling of it then means that you will make better decisions as you purchase those materials. I think voluntary programs are fantastic and I'm glad to hear that battery manufacturers are getting in, into the game of, of recapturing their products that are hazardous and dangerous to, to the public. What they have to do though is put together a real program that actually works um, and not just have a couple of boxes out in a couple of places. There are so, they have to have a program that literally is set up to educate people about taking action to recapture every single battery that they produce and sell. You know, even if we just put a, a diversion down at our, um, down at, at the authority, you know, not enough people are going to go down there and do it. It's, it's five miles out of town. It just isn't doable. We need to find out ways, and we need the state and, and these producers to find out ways uh, to make it something that's, that's real doable. The response that I've been getting from customers is that, you know, they're glad that they finally have a place to bring the tubes and finally get rid of them. I mean, like I mentioned before, we get some customers that have been, you know, stacking these tubes up for, for years, you know, because they haven't found a place that they can dispose of them properly. And so with that being said, we get a lot of new faces in sight here. Needles are real concern. We have to wear special gloves, long shirts, eye protection, and again, for other products, but also needles are the most uh, da dangerous in all our employees' minds. I think I think we're all probably a little surprised at the volume of cars and traffic that we had. Um, I think we had almost 300 vehicles come through our parking lot. We, our security people had not planned for that kind of traffic, but uh, we handled it uh, with a lot of help from the county and the city. Uh, most were quite grateful for the opportunity to have a place to, to turn in their their pharmaceuticals and, and sharps, uh, both. We had we had stuff from the 40s turned into us. We had glass eyedroppers, antiques, and glass eyedroppers, and um, prescriptions filled at drugstores that closed in the 60s. And so these people had obviously been keeping it for a long, long time. We all know that keeping pollutants out of the water is a lot easier than cleaning them up once they're in there. So we really support consumer protection through having an extended producer responsibility in making sure that these things are taken care of at their end of life. Please do something about extended producer responsibility, product stewardship. We're, we're all working really hard at the local level to try to respond, but it just gets to be so one-sided. And I said, you know, it feels like a, a teeter-totter that's that you're sitting on and no one's sitting on the other end, and it really does need to be a balance through the whole life cycle. And manufacturers and producers really need to be our partners on the other side of that teeter-totter so that one of us doesn't either fall off or go flying. <laughs> but we really do need the help locally. We're trying, but we need some some support at the state. We've, we've, we're making progress. We're seeing uh, carpets are going to be uh, included in that process of manufacturers being responsible for recycling them. Therefore, they're going to produce them in a way that's more recyclable. And so we're seeing that with paints, uh, light bulbs, um, and uh, disposable batteries are next on the agenda. I believe they're going to be uh, recycled or planned for that will be coming up uh, this coming year. Uh, so really, you probably want to look for it everywhere. The idea that a manufacturer, when they're developing a product, would think about how this material is going to come back and get recycled and keep it out of the environment uh, is a good thing. And that's how they should be designing materials. And uh, so we'll look for those opportunities. You know, you take the, the biggest impact items first, but then, you know, over time you just continue to look. And perhaps it'll just become the norm that people will just understand that, that when you produce a material, you should be ready to take it back. and. Uh, it, it just makes sense. There's some laws that sometimes don't make sense, but in this case, this is one of those things that just, just makes sense. And over time, I think people are understanding how it works. They've seen other people do it, and, uh, and they will follow.